Stinger here. In this tutorial I'll be covering the usage of Valve's Particle Editor, a very powerful but sadly underused tool. Part 1 will go over how to get to the Particle Editor. Part 2 will cover the basics of using the Particle Editor. Part 3 will go over how to save .pcf files and add them to the Particle Manifest. Part 4 will go over adding the particle effect you just created to your map. Part 5 will go over some more advanced techniques of the particle editor, including forces, constraints, and dynamic colors. Part 1. The first thing you'll need to do is choose what game you want to make the particle effect for. For this tutorial, I'll use Half-Life 2 Episode 2, but it should work for any of them. To enable the particle editor, right-click the game, go to Properties, and add Tools to the launch options. Now, when you start the game, it should launch with Tools enabled. First off, go to Tools and select Particle Editor. Also go File, New. Part 2 Now that you have the Particle Editor open, click Create and name your particle effect something. I will call mine Test 1. Down to the very right, you'll see a visual representation of the particle effect. Let's make this a bit bigger. You can rotate this view by holding down the left mouse button, zoom by holding down the right, and pan by holding down the scroll wheel. As you can see, it's empty at the moment. There are several different properties and renders you can put on your particle effects, but we'll start at simple. Go to Properties and change the material. Type Particle in the filter. Pick one you think looks nice. Some textures won't work properly. I suggest just trying until you find something that looks good. I'll be using particle forward slash particle glow 11. Now that we have a particle material, we'll need to render it. Go to renderer, right click, press add, and double click render animated sprites. All of the default options should be alright for now. Go to emitter and add emit continuously. A strange white blob should appear. This blob is actually your particles being rendered. To add more variety, Go to Initializer and add Position Within Sphere Random. This will make them spawn within a sphere. Change the Distance Min and Distance Max values to change where they spawn. All of these values are in Hammer Units, so 32 units in the Particle Editor equals 32 units in game. As you can see, now the particles spawned from a slightly larger white blob. Let's add an operator to give the particles a lifespan. Go to Operator and add Alpha, Fade, and Decay. We can also go back to Properties, scroll down, and change the size of the particles. Part 3 Now that our particle effect is done, we'll need to save it. Go to File, Save As, and name it something. Click Save. To get the particle effect to work, we need to add it to the manifest file. Assuming you are making it for episode 2, to get the manifest file, go to Steam Apps and open the episode 2 content.gcf file with gcfscape. Go to ep2 particles and copy the particles underscore manifest.txt file to where the pcf file you just made was saved to, i.e. Steam Apps, Steam name here, half life 2 episode 2, ep2 particles. Now, open the particle manifest and add the name of your PCR file at the very bottom. Part 4 Adding the particle effect to a level is rather simple. I have this little test map here. All you have to do is add an info underscore particle underscore system entity. Change the particle system name to whatever it is you named your particle effect, not the PCF file. For the test, we change start active to yes. It should be there when you run your map. Part 5 I'll just go through some stuff you can do, and then leave you to experiment on your own. Let's give the particle some movement. Go to operator and add movement basic. Let's have the particle go upward by giving it 100 gravity. There, now we have this interesting flame thing going on here. Let's give it some rotation by adding a force generator, twist around axis. Let's add alpha and color random initializers. 
to make it look more random. We can also set the maximum distance of the particles. Go to constraints and add constraint distance to control point. The control point is always the center of the particle effect. I've set mine to 20, but again, playing around with it is what helps you in the long run. There is a rather detailed documentation of all of this on the Valve developer wiki, but I can't stress this enough. I learned all of this just by trial and error. I recommend you do some of the same, because learning on your own is always the best way of learning. This concludes my tutorial on Valve's Particle Editor. 